Hello, everyone. My name is Vashank, and I'm a rising junior at Lindbergh High School in San Jose, California. My research focuses on improving healthcare outcomes and personalized treatment decisions on a global scale through deep learning, specifically addressing the global concern of reducing the burden of polyp-associated colorectal cancer. As a passionate researcher myself with a strong interest in global health and music, my goal is to become a professor dedicated to advancing medical research while also establishing a music school. Today, I will explain how my research fills important gaps in using deep learning for clinical prediction through a three-phase study, where I discovered valuable imaging biomarkers within histopathology that have been clinically underutilized. Histopathology involves the examination of stained tissue extracted through human biopsies for disease diagnosis, but its genomic and proteomic information remains largely underutilized for manual means. Limited expertise in analyzing such data impedes progress in achieving accurate diagnostics, and as a result, the need arises for more reliable and robust tools to ensure global health. On the right, you can observe the histopathology image analysis workflow and how it informs patient treatments. Now, AI as a diagnostic tool with histopathology data holds promise, but it faces challenges. Deep learning models struggle with real-world data, lack interpretability, and need large data sets for practical clinical use. These limitations reduce generalizability, increase bias, and hinder equitable healthcare access in resource-constrained settings. I studied colorectal polyps, abnormal growths in the colon or rectum that can turn cancerous if untreated. They are a significant global health concern, affecting over 25% of adults over 45 and linked to colorectal cancer, the second deadliest but most preventable cancer in the world with early diagnosis. Now, accurate subtyping is crucial for risk assessment and treatments. However, high interpathologist variability makes differentiation challenging, leading to overly aggressive treatment decisions. I specifically focused on two subtypes, sessile serrated adenomas and hyperplastic polyps. SSAs are flat polyps with serrated glandular structures that are more likely to progress to cancer but very difficult to identify, while HPs or hyperplastic polyps are benign polyps with excessive cell growth and minimal cancer potential, usually detected during colonoscopy screenings. My research had three main objectives, to develop a data augmentation pipeline for optimal use of a small data set, establishing a robust convolutional neural network model, a type of deep learning model for accurate histopathology-based subtyping, and three, to devise a biomarker discovery pipeline for interpretable and biologically relevant differentiation of these subtypes. By addressing these objectives, my work aims to address key limitations in precision medicine, such as transferability, interpretability, and data accessibility. And the ultimate goal was to enhance treatment decisions and improve patient outcomes globally. So for my research, I utilized the MHIS data set from the Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center, comprising of 3,152 de-identified H&E stained images of colorectal polyp subtypes. Despite the data set's smaller size compared to typical requirements, I divided it into training and testing sets with each image associated with a subtype label stored in a biopsy file. To ensure generalizability, I also implemented random shuffling of the images in my data set. I first developed a unique data augmentation pipeline to work with the limited data set, and I discovered that variations in color profiles across my images, often referred to as batch effects, caused my models to learn irrelevant information, thus preventing transferability when evaluating the models on real-world data. To mitigate this problem, I employed Reinhardt stain normalization. It's an image augmentation technique that maps all these images to the same stain color profile so that the model learns to focus on features outside of the stain gradient. I also incorporated a series of random augmentations into my dataset before training to enhance the generalizability of my model. The workflow image on the right provides a basic overview and an example that demonstrates how stain variations can misinform diagnostic prediction. I then focused on developing a robust deep convolutional neural network model for colorectal polyp subtyping. I trained three different models that were fast to train and fast to evaluate. This aspect is crucial for global health as AI models must learn and perform quickly and efficiently to perform well in high stakes environments. After training the three models, I evaluated their performance using multiple metrics, including AU accuracy, F1 score, and AUROC. An AUROC value of one indicates a perfect classifier and an AUROC of 0.5 indicates performance equivalent to a random guess. Additionally, I plotted the AUPRC and the ROC curves to examine the precision and recall trade-offs of my model. I determined that the DenseNet, which is a model I trained, outperformed all the other models that I trained, successfully fulfilling my second objective. To enable prediction interpretability, I sought to understand why DenseNet performed exceptionally well in the test set. Well, the lack of interpretability in AI models can lead to overly aggressive treatments and incorrect patient stratification, ultimately impacting global health negatively. 
To tackle this issue, I developed a biomarker discovery pipeline employing gradient-weighted class activation mapping. This technique allowed me to identify the crucial regions within each image that influenced the final diagnosis. And the pipeline resulted in the discovery of novel imaging biomarkers visualized as heat maps on test images. This breakthrough enables more interpretable AI-directed diagnostics and prognostics, ensuring that clinical predictions remain visualizable and leading to improved patient outcomes. So in summary, my research achieved state-of-the-art results in an interpretable manner, effectively addressing the primary limitations of precision medicine, lack of transferability, data accessibility, and interpretability. The workflow image on the right provides a visualization of my research pipeline, and I would like to highlight the impacts of my work. Firstly, I demonstrated that deep learning can revolutionize global health by providing robust diagnostic tools for histopathology analysis. Secondly, I showcased how limitations in ML models can result in overly aggressive treatments, negatively affecting patient outcomes worldwide. Lastly, I illustrated that efficient and robust methods for biomarker discovery and images lead to enhanced risk stratification and the identification of biologically relevant insights in deep learning. Regarding future work, I aim to validate my findings using additional real-world clinical data by collaborating with pathologists and physicians in the field. Furthermore, I aspire to develop a hardware prototype or software application to develop, deploy my model for self-diagnostics. Lastly, I'm interested in incorporating multiple modalities of data, such as EHRs and images, to enhance the robustness and applicability of my model in various clinical settings. So before concluding, I would like to acknowledge the contributions of previous researchers whose work inspired my own. And I also want to extend my grat gratitude to you for your attentive presence. I want to thank JHU and GHLC for providing this valuable opportunity to present and BioRender for their design services, enabling the creation of high quality images showcased in this presentation. Thank you.